everyone, welcome back to Absolutely! My name is Benny, that is Sal, and Sal, let's give our best werewolf howl. <laughs> why, did, why did that rhyme? Sal and howl. Well, I don't know, ready, ready? Three, two, one. Ow! <laughs> Yay. I feel like Girl you're in a more night. public spot than me, so you were kind of like, I don't want to yell. Eh, I mean, it's, uh, I got room. I just don't feel <laughs> like it. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about werewolf by night. So I put on a tweet. Honestly, since Endgame, this is my favorite MCU project. Straight up. Wow. Like, I loved this. Now, I'm a fan of classic horror, like the, the old Nosferatu, and, you know, the, you know, I just love that old classic stuff. I don't sure. sit around watching it all day, but I like that stuff. And I honestly was avoiding Werewolf by Night because I thought it was going to be trash. Straight uh, up trash. You know, I, I'd, I'd heard... Some people cons like concerned about that. And I remember it was you guys. You guys were like, "Oh man, that looks like garbage." And I'm yeah. like, "What? How could you think that?" <laughs> uh, so I'm happy that it is not that way uh, for you guys. That you that you did enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I loved it in its entirely. Um, let's go over a couple of beats here. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much because we are doing this one live. Some people haven't seen it yet because people don't even know it came out. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know it came out until Dylan told us. I loved it, by the way. These little freaks recorded this without telling me that they were going to record this. But yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, I want more of these. That is my review. Bye. But yeah. I want to talk about the highlights for both of us, because you also enjoyed it, right? So we're just across oh, yeah. the board. No, no, no. We yeah. enjoyed this project. We liked it. That's yeah. your short spoiler review of the show. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing I noticed was the, the whole thing is filmed in black and white. Now, at first, I thought it was just more of a gimmick to mm -hmm. be like, oh, it's a classic horror flick. But I, I, well, as the show was going on, I don't know if it's a show or a movie because it's only like 90 minutes, uh, 50 I, I, uh, minutes. Special. Special. Um, I, I saw the other reason they were doing the black and white. Mm. All the CG looked super crisp because it was in black and white. Didn't have to <laughs> worry about it. Yeah. And yeah. there was far more blood and gore than I've ever seen in an MCU project without mm. it being blood and gore. No, like, <laughs> I, 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 I remember hearing people say it was really gory, or at least more gory than you'd expect. Right. Uh, but I, I didn't really notice, honestly. Like, I, I did notice one moment where, like, someone get cut, and I saw a little bit, maybe, of blood, but I was like, okay, you know. I, I mean, uh, literally, heads roll. Literally, heads do roll. I don't want to... Yeah, multiple <laughs> heads roll in this... In this and, and that's true, yeah. But at this point, like, I mean, they cut Thanos' head off in the largest movie in all, of all they time. They cut a guy's head off in this. I like, know, what, so what I'm just saying. I, like, I'm trying to give it a spoiler free while we're discussing it. Just bear in mind, it'll be light spoilers. But there is a scene where Elsa cuts a guy by the throat and blood's like... Whoosh. That's true. Yeah, she does yep. cut a throat or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is It is pretty gory. I mean, like, it's gory in, in, in so far as Marvel is like a... Like, basically at all ages property at this point. So it's like, yeah, yeah no, they, they they push it a little bit. And yeah. I, I'm glad of it because it really does harken back to um, what it's trying to homage, which I think is really, like, which, beneficial. I loved that. I loved the tone they kept for it because it felt modern, but it did get those vibes of, like, an old horror flick. Totally. Um, the Staying with the non-spoiler, how did you feel about Elsa's portrayal? Uh, I like Elsa Bloodstone as a character especially in the comics, or yeah. more accurately, from the comics, this version felt like an Irish version of Jessica Jones from Netflix. <laughs> like, she I, reminded it, me a lot of Kristen Ritter, and I was like, She did. Eh. She didn't but, remind me of Elsa Bloodstone, and I think it also added to that they didn't even try to do the red hair that is the no, Elsa Bloodstone didn't even like, staple. Yeah, and maybe it wouldn't have looked good in black and white or something like that, but either way, uh, the other thing was... She's a little inconsistent because Giacchino clearly wants to do a lot of things with that character that are in service to the special that are not terribly in service to establishing Elsa Bloodstone as a character. You know, right. like, we've got her story. We've got her history. Here's her dad. Here's her stepmom. Here's her house. Here's her lineage and the stone and her badassery. But also, I wanted it's, to it's be really, really... It's basically a backdoor origin pilot for Elsa oh, Bloodstone. Yeah. This whole thing. Oh, yeah, which I'm all for. Yeah. Uh, but also, we wanted to be, like, really afraid of the werewolf. Like, we want to do that, like, beautiful push-in on her, like, cowering in fear, which I wouldn't ever see Elsa Bloodstone do. Oh, no. But if it's I, an origin... You know what? I, I'll her, argue okay. against that. Because in this movie or special, mm -hmm. she's getting the bloodstone. She doesn't have it yet. 
Right. So so we don't know what the experience level is to go yeah, and how, slay monsters. What's what's her kill level? How many monsters has she slain? Is she going to slay monsters in the future? Because in the intro, they basically straight up say she's denounced all of this. She hasn't right. done it. She's only here because it's her birthright. Yeah, yeah. So that's and I'm okay with that. Honestly, like I I, I you know it was a little bit of a, of a of a culture shock for me at least to go, oh, okay, that's not the comic book version. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if it's an origin, I'm all for it, and I really enjoy that character. I think when she eases into the chair at the end, I'm like, okay. We that got, feels like we a got ready to go. moment. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be more spoiler territory for those who are watching our live version right now, so I just want to warn you, uh, if you want to come back in about 10 minutes, we'll be doing the normal podcast, but we do have to go deep dive into some of the more spoiler territory, otherwise this review is going to suck. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Ted. <laughs> Ted, yeah, yeah. Ted was incredible. Yes, I, I loved agree. that portrayal of Ted. Me too. Uh, I, I was I was worried about what they were gonna do with Ted. Uh, I remember only seeing like a flash of him in the trailer and going like, okay. You know, because Marvel Ted's has made <laughs> Marvel's made a Ted movie already, and yeah. uh, it came out I think in two thousand six, and it was a tr- I've seen it, and it is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Don't. It's not even fun to watch. It's really, really. It's like Sharknado. Like it's really yeah. bad. Uh, so I was like, okay, anything will be better than this. Like than than what it was. I was a little worried, but they pulled me out of it for the grudification of characters like Ted. Yeah. You know, where it's like, oh, he's lovable and fun, and we're going to get baby Ted and stuff like No. <laughs> baby Ted. I, right? Because, like, that would work. I could see that, yeah. But uh, I love that character, or at the very least, I love the image of that character. I like what Ted looks like. I love, you know, I, I, we're, I assume we're just avoiding the character's actual name. So I'm just. No, using, no, you can go. I already oh, said okay. it's going to be spoilers, yeah. All right, I love Man Thing. I think the Man Thing looks awesome. <laughs> I think Man Thing might be more iconic looking than Swamp Thing. I know. That's oh, one hundred percent. I like love that they it. also loop the story because, like, the whole plot is that they're hunting down Man Thing, um, and the bloodstone's on his back. They're all trying to get it, and I love because at first when Jack wouldn't grab it, I was like, "Yeah, why isn't he just taking it off?" And I like how that that looped around and explained yeah. a few more things. So, I agree. I think they did a great job portraying him. Um, I also love that we got to see Ted's abilities in play. Completely, like, like so it cool. wasn't just he's there and whatever. It he's was not like, just there and cute. Like he's not like the dog of yeah. the episode. Like he is cute and scary and fun. And it's like if he's on your side, great. And if he's not, then you're screwed. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's that's, and that's, that's one so of the things I loved thing. about it because we joke about the name Ted, but I love that that was used as a way so that he knows you're not hostile. Right. And Jack told her, like, no, use his real name. He'll think you're friendly or know you're yeah. friendly that way. <laughs> well, and it's also like it's tough to say to 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 explain the term man thing in, <laughs> in you know, vocally. Uh, but I, I love the portrayal. Uh, and I got to tell you, you know, since we're in spoiler territory, we'll say that, like, we only get a few seconds of color in this whole special. Somehow man thing looks great. Oh, yeah. Like, like he looks great great like at the cg not you know i understand you know black and white okay let's go man thing let's go werewolf let's do everything like let's do it all because it's all yeah. going to be cl- cleaned up by or, or or obfuscated by the by the black and white but in color he actually looked a little better and i was like wow they really nailed it i, yeah. I, I hope we I, see more man thing in this that was in, one of in my the favorite future. things about the cinematography was the way they handled the color that the yeah. red was what would pop. And it reminded sure. me of like in action, black, white, and blood from like yeah. the comic series where they do that kind of a thing. And I, I just really loved that. And I love how at the ending, it faded into color. I don't know what that was supposed to signify, but it was yes. awesome. <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah, no, I, I uh, everybody I thought was, um, you know, any character that was a pull from Marvel. And of course, all of them are in some way or shape, shape or form. But like the characters that we recognize, that we're meant to recognize. Yeah. Uh, I think did a nice job and especially, you know, this is, this is supposed to be like kind of like a one-off. This is supposed to be a done in one. It feels like a kind of just like over there, we're doing one for us, one for them kind of thing. And so I would not be surprised if they're like, we're not doing anything with man thing, Elsa Bloodstone or Werewolf by Night ever again, or in anything other than like maybe holiday specials. Yeah. But they did a nice job of making it, feel like its own thing while also being able to be part of the greater universe like if jack shows up again we're down if man thing yeah. is appears if elsa gets to be in the blade movie which she should we're in you know it yeah. works 
The uh, I like uh, actually uh, Badette Geek's response. The color fade felt almost like Wizard of Oz, like we're waking up from yeah. a nightmare, like they're coming out of that. Yeah, I like that true. a lot. I like that metaphor. That works out great. Yeah. Um. So I love I love that. So let's talk about Jack himself. I actually yeah. was not as big of a fan of his portrayal hmm. of just kind of scampering around trying to get Man Thing out for the most part. Like he's not yeah, doing yeah. anything until he finally transforms. And I do really appreciate that they went for practical effects with him as opposed mm-hmm. to like, and now he's wolfed out. My complaint is that every portrayal of the what werewolf in everything looked like a more traditional werewolf. Yeah. While he looked like a 1920s werewolf movie character. Well, he looks like werewolf by night. Werewolf by night is, you know, my 687th favorite Marvel character. Uh, you know, <laughs> he, I don't care about werewolf by night. Like I'm not, I, I'm not a purist when it comes to Jack Russell, aka right. Werewolf by Night. So for them to make him, uh, you know, portrayed by uh, by Gail Bernal and how he he played him, you know, for his nationality and to do this kind of like whole, you know, like he did the makeup that like was representation representative of his culture and uh, and all that. Like I was like, go for it, you know, make him whatever right. you want, like you know, do it. Uh, but when he does transform, like he looks like werewolf by night. And I remember yeah. like werewolf by night, not really looking like a traditional werewolf. Like he doesn't look like, like he, I just he looks like a Ray he's Harryhausen. Like yeah. He's looked yeah. like both depending on who's writing and drawing him. Exactly. Like he looks like a Ray Harryhausen kind of like, Oh shit. It's a werewolf. It's a, like it's more of a wolf man, less of a werewolf. Basically. Exactly. Wolf yeah. man, not werewolf. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that way you and can I, do man I, wolf I, in I, the future. I, and... if, if doing wolf man versus werewolf gets us the practical effects, I'm on mm-hmm. board. Cause that looked great. Yeah, see, I, I wasn't even sure if it was. Stuff yeah, the black and white. Oh yeah, I didn't even know if it was practical or not. Like I, I, I was, I was fooled one way or the other. Yeah, um, but I, I also that. liked that we also see the actor through it. Like it wasn't just okay, and then we make him a completely CG character. Like he yeah. looks like the actor as a as a wolf man, which is yeah. great. Like that that worked for the story. Overall, I thought it was great, and I do think they get, they definitely got a comedy horror vibe going with it, which I did really appreciate. This definitely hit the nail on the head much better than Doctor Strange 2 to mm. fill in that comedy horror, because you had those moments where it's kind of spooky, spooky. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of like Evil Dead 2 or Army mm. of Darkness, where it's, it's, it's supposed to be scary, but it's not. It's really just yeah. funny. Hocus Pocus kind of like that too, you know, like that's yeah. the vibe I was getting from Army of Darkness really is an action adventure movie with like a little bit of horror elements. It's it, like Army of Darkness is a comedy. Right. This, this did not strike me like, you know, I can imagine detractors being like, of course they had to go humor with it. But like the humor is, I think, really well executed in this to help alleviate tension or to pull the viewer out of something that might be like kind of mired in not plot, but like world building, you know, like we're meeting a lot of different colorful, crazy characters. They're all very self-important. They're all going after this one goal that requires like the spilling of blood and like the, 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 the worshiping of, of whatever. And so to have like a joke get cracked helps ease the tension and get us into a more vulnerable place so that if there is a jump scare or a fun little like, you know, horror element moment, we're more susceptible to it and more receptive yeah. of it. I, I think this was handled much better, more more how I would prefer quips to be handled in the future, where there was a lot yeah. of plot and then an individual quip to break up the tension. Sure. You know, if you take something like Thor, Love and Thunder, that's like a joke every two minutes. That is like, a, they don't that, stop joking. This this hits the nail and then like they break it up with a quick joke. This this has well, this was Thor Love and Thunder is an SNL sketch. <laughs> it is, yeah. Like it is not about the plot; it is about the jokes. Like it is about watching these characters have fun on screen, which is not what I pay, you know, however the hell much I paid to go to a movie theater these days to watch. This is very deliberate. You know, it's it's fifty five trim minutes. It is directed by a musical composer who really wanted to like tell this story. It's so atmospheric. The opening title cards and ending credits are so beautifully executed and well yeah. done. And it's like, clearly this is a labor of love. I, just to go and everyone jump who's on working on it quick. wants to make that. Yeah. I watched the credits hoping for an end credit scene. Me too. But I didn't like skip looking around. It was on Disney Plus. I could easily do it on my tablet. Totally. I didn't skip around. I watched the credits. <laughs> no, because they look good. Like they, they yeah. it was, it, and it's such a novelty, you know, and Marvel's really good at making end credits sequences like spectacular. But this was, this is a very different kind of execution. Uh, I was kind of hoping... I'm, you know, Elsa Bloodstone and Man Thing will return. That's what I was kind of. <laughs> yeah, I would have taken just the text of like these characters are coming yeah, back. Don't worry. I would love that too. 
Yeah. Elsa, yeah. Bantha, I, Elsa, Ted, and Jack will be back. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> and not just in like next year's Halloween special, although if that's it, I'll take it because yeah, they're this, just the this, Halloween characters. Yeah, this holiday special idea, you know, like is in many ways like the a really, really great execution of the Disney Plus format where it's like it's in your homes, it's directly available, there's no paywall. It's just like here's a thing and it's time sen- not time sensitive but it is like it- it's sensitive to the time from which it's coming like it is coming yeah. out in october for halloween you know like the guardians of the galaxy christmas specials coming out in whenever november december and it's like we're getting that and it- and if it is as well executed as this keep them coming Right. You know, I'll take an Arbor Day, a Hall- a 4th of July, whatever, and make make all kinds of stuff. This is officially the first time, well, probably the third time, because I mean, I have enjoyed a few of these, but the first time yeah. that I feel like Disney Plus, its execution worked for what it was doing. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's... She-Hulk <laughs> works as a sitcom. Like it or hate it, it works as a, a B-tier sitcom, in my opinion. It is, it, I think it's like a D-tier sitcom. Okay, right? well, it, it still works as a sitcom, regardless it is, it of is, the tier. It's a deliberate sitcom. Like they're yeah, doing a thing. it's a deliberate a sitcom. It's what they're doing. What if is a deliberate cartoon, sl- like just to have fun with it. Right. WandaVision was trying to tell a thing involving story. Like those all worked. And I feel like this is the next thing that actually works as a special on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. There are more successes from the Disney Plus Marvel initiative, I think, than failures. Um, you know, because people like What If, Loki, WandaVision, Falcon Winter Soldier, whether they like it or not, uh, Werewolf by Night, you know, uh, these are things that worked overall. I right. mean, She-Hulk is made for a very specific audience. It's made for a very specific demographic, and that demographic, that audience, loves it. The oh, rest yeah. don't. But like, whatever. It, it it's targeted for that group, and it's working. Uh, Where of my night is exactly that kind of thing. I can imagine a lot of people hating this just because of how specific and focused it is, oh, which. Yeah is antithetical to the Marvel formula. Like, Marvel is for everybody. Like, everybody should be going to the next Marvel thing, but with Disney+, Plus, it's like, you're not going to watch every show on Disney+. Plus. You're not going to watch everything that Marvel has made for Disney+. Plus. That's right. okay. Yeah, that's our opinion of Werewolf by Night. We both loved it. Hope you guys did as well. Let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are, and we'll see you next time right here at Absolutely Marvel in DC.